finally back again today i want to talk about top 10 masculine slash unisex leaning rose fragrances people always consider well nowadays for rose to be feminine but you know, personally in my opinion i find it to be a very unisex slash masculine leaning note and as a matter of fact a lot of vintage fragrances and back in the day used rose in masculine fragrances and things like lavender was considered feminine but uh modern times it feels like that that has switched right but uh, the middle east has always as far as the men always would wear rose and i think um they definitely know the way in my opinion when it comes to that and so let's just get right into it first one i want to talk about is a fragrance that was gifted to me so you can say pr from the brand owner but i really do enjoy this uh the materials are a1 and uh, that is La Dula Exquise by Les Abstray. And as you can see, I have put a little dent in there. Gorgeous kind of uh, this natural Bulgarian rose, this nice animalic leathery castorium, which again is also natural. Some uh, nice kind of clean patchouli in here that's also natural. Some orris butter, natural. A bunch of spices in here, a bunch of different uh, resins in here as well. Just something very special about this one in my opinion. And so that will be, I guess, number 10 on the list. Next up is a vintage that I personally, in my opinion, I think is kind of like a hidden gem. And especially for the price that you can get this. I think, I'm not sure, I got this a while ago. And so maybe Anouge at Enchanté Perfume still has some in stock. But this is Azor Actor. And this is really, really nice. Kind of this basically fruity rose. And at the top, you'll get this kind of melange of fruits that's kind of comes off like a fruit compote, uh, leather, a nice spicy vintage like carnation in the mid as well, woody, um, spicy, I guess maybe a little aromatic. I definitely get some green touches here, but very nice. Although it is vintage, this does smell very uh, modern at the same time, and. Uh, I guess you could say this is kind of like a timeless classic in my opinion. So that is Zor Ektor. Next is a fragrance that is definitely overpriced, but very nice. This is more kind of uh, that mass appealing range. Uh, and that is Ombre Nomad by uh, Louis Vuitton. A lot of, I mean, this is getting a lot of hype, but this, I posted a photo once of this, maybe like six months ago on Instagram and it got me 17,000 likes and a bunch of different comments on it, people arguing back and forth. And it seems like this, a lot of people know about this and enjoy it. Some people don't because this is very strong, very rich. Uh, the one downside is there's definitely a decent amount of amber woods in here, but it's done very well in my opinion. Again, this kind of uh, raspberry leather thing going on, but nothing like I wouldn't say like a Tuscan leather. This isn't like a vintage brown leather smoky jacket with a touch of raspberry. Like the raspberry is definitely kicked up here. There's definitely some of that, that smoky charred woodiness that Western ouds have. I don't know if there's real oud in here. I think they might say that there is real, real oud in here. I don't know. I don't think so in my opinion. But rose isn't listed, but it's pretty obvious that there's got to be some rose in here, unless it's the raspberry giving off that effect. But uh, definitely like a showstopper, very loud. So this is basically like a two spray max for me. Next up is a release that used to get a lot of talk around 2016, 2017, but not anymore. I personally think this is this is as far as the regular line this is one of my favorite lilabos and that is rose 31 and although i definitely get some red hues in here from a rose this is there's definitely a lot more going on here so i this is kind of like a vetiver rose almost all right this kind of uh rooty vetiver definitely get this kind of smokiness from a, a cold incense some Gaiac wood, some some musk, some ambroxan in here, just uh, blended very, very well. And uh, 
very nice fragrance in my opinion. Next up is Ho Hang Club by Balenciaga. Now this is great because at the time that I purchased this, this was going for 50 bucks. A bunch of sellers had it on eBay. And for the price, I mean, it's how can you not buy it, right? But this is a very gothic rose, uh, very dark black rose. I know there is some uh, oak moss in here, so I definitely get that like forest floor vibe here, mixing with that rose. Maybe some patchouli in here. I definitely get that kind of musty kind of fungal almost patchouli vibe here kind of coniferous in a way very very nice i don't know what it goes for nowadays who knows but at the time this was definitely a steal whole hand club next up is a fragrance that has ensembles in the uh in the title and you could probably guess what it is but in my opinion i get mainly rose here and then i do right behind it i do get ambergris and then I do get some of that incense, and that is Ensemble Matique by uh, Guerlain. Very, this fragrance is kind of like, the best way to describe it is basically like being on the ocean on a overcast skies. It fog, rainy, which is very, very nice. Just something mysterious, something about it. All right, next up on the list is probably an overpriced one, but is what it is uh it is roja parfums amber awood and this is basically another fruity rose with fig and amber is ambergris here so very almost marine like salty leathery rose uh, it, the base, best way i could describe it is it's kind of like picture five tons of rose petals being compressed and squeezed into one bottle right in here and you could tell by even the color like my god right and then with that mix some some wine red wine made out of fig that's what i get here uh just gorgeous aromatic woody smoky really nice rose but definitely sample this <laughs> do not buy this I do want to put these together because I do think uh, one definitely inspired the other. And that is Antaeus Porom and Van Cleef and Arpels Porom. Both are a leathery rose fragrance. This here is my splash bottle that I got really lucky. This uh, Korean woman, she ended up having a gift set. I did a video on it so you can see the, the tag on the back there. This set came from South Korea. As a matter of fact, I have it right here too. It came in this box set here with the 50 ml uh, aftershave and the soap there, as you can see. And it's in pristine condition, this splash bottle. Man, hold on a second for me. Oh, goodness. Something about this, uh, this, it does something that no other fragrance uh, I've smelled does. And that is this, the rose in here slowly blooms, right? It kind of starts as like a stem and then it starts to bloom slowly the longer you wear it. It's, it's really interesting, really nice, uh, aromatic, woody, spicy, leathery, animalic, uh, floral, a little resinous, just uh, a masterpiece in my uh, my opinion. I don't say that often, but I could definitely see why this is such a cold classic. And Van Cleef and Arpels pretty much does that the same thing, that leathery rose, although this one isn't really animalic, but there is some lavender at the top. There's a lot more aromatics here, in my opinion. Uh, Antaeus is spicier, but this is more aromatic, rose, leathery, woody, smoky spicy but great great release oh i know they've re-released this i haven't tried it but maybe i'll try it one day and do a comparison and last but not least is another steal that i got from this korean woman uh, from queens that met up with me she sold me this coco parfum from the 80s i think for like 80 bucks or something like that it's a 7 ml here as you can see Right, and the reason why I specifically bring up the Parfum is because the Parfum is the one that has a big note of rose. 
very, very nice plump rose here with a bunch of different spices, resins, and of course that amber. This is Chanel's take on opium, YSL opium, but done in the way that Chanel does. Uh, there's a bunch of different other florals here. I think there's some jasmine in here as well. Spices, aromatics, I and mean, there's a whole bunch of different notes here, but uh, definitely ambery. I want to say the amber is coming, the main, it's not like a very sweet amber. I, I'd say it's more coming from, from a labdanum, so more resinous, smoky amber rather than a vanillic sweet amber. But this is just outstanding stuff. Very, very big fragrance. I know from the nozzle, when you smell the EDT, EDPO, the parfum, it smells feminine. But once it's on skin, for me, the resins and all the masculine notes uh, stand out. And so I would say this is definitely unisex in my opinion. That is my list. Let me know if you like anything from here, if you've tried anything from here, and which rose fragrances do you like. Hope you enjoyed that. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye.